For our next series of lessons, we're going to expand on some of the things we've already learned, and we're also going to be adding some ID work and some C-axis work. So let's start by opening up our next sample part. I want you to go to File Open, and I want you to go to wherever you installed your sample parts, and I want you to set your file type to Parasolid XT files. And the file we're going to get this time is called Hexplug1. And open that up. So this is our part. We've got this little hex nut on the top. We've got some slots that go around the outside. And we need to do some ID work to uh, drill through and to rough out the inside of this part. Now if I hit function key F9 we'll see that zero is already at the front of this face of the part. But that's not actually the face that I want to do first. We switch to a top view and show you what I mean. If I was to machine this side first and cut the slots I could probably rotate it around and then chuck on this part somehow, but I think I'd prefer to do the ID work first and then rotate it around and then clamp off the inside of this bore. So let me start by going to an isometric view and we're going to flip the part over. And we're going to do it like we did last time. We're going to pick Dynamic Transform. It says select the entities to copy. We only have the one solid, so we'll pick that and end our selection. And now we get our gnomon. And I'm going to move my gnomon so I snap to the center of the back side of the part. Because I want to move that back side to the front. So we'll give that a click. Now, if I mouse over the X, I can do a rotation of the part through that plane. We'll flip that over 180 degrees. And again, you can check that up on the ribbon bar dimension. Click that in place. Now, if I mouse over the lower part of the shaft for the x-axis, I get the ruler so that I can move this in a linear fashion. And I'm just going to move my cursor over the origin so it locks onto that origin. And we can OK that. And there's our part flipped over. Then I can do a clear colors to put everything back to the regular input color. Now let's select our machine type. We're going to go to machine type and select lathe default. And we'll take a look at our properties starting with our tool settings. I'm going to give this a program number. Again, you can give it whatever four digit number you want. I want to calculate from the material and I'm basically just setting the things that I set for all the other projects. We're going to switch to stock setup where we can define our stock for the left spindle. So let's go into properties and I'm going to start by selecting for the OD. So I'll hit select and I'm going to pick a point on this outer diameter on the front face. So it says the OD of this part is three inches. Well, I'm going to need to have some extra stock to turn off, so we're going to start with bar stock that is 3 and 1 8. Then we need to set our length. What I'm going to do for that is to right click in the length field and tell it I want to set this as a distance between two points. Now I'm going to rotate this around a little bit and I'm going to move my mouse over the back side because we always want to go from back to front when we're setting this distance so that we end up with a positive value. So I'm going to go from the center of the bore on the back side to the center of the bore on the front side and that'll give me the length of the part. So my part is essentially three inches by two and a quarter inches in length. Now for this example we're going to assume that we're going to be cutting this from bar stock. So we're just going to do this one side of the part doing the hole through the center and machining out the bore 
and maybe turning the outside diameter to size. And then we're going to cut the part off. So that's all going to be done on one machine. So this is going to be setup one on machine one. And then for setup two, we'll do the other side of the part. And that could be on the same machine or it could be on a completely different machine. So when I do the length for this, I actually want the length to be longer than just the part. I want it to appear like it's a bar. So I'm going to make this six and a quarter, and I'm going to tell it I want 50,000 stock sticking out the front side of the part. And we can preview that. Go back to my top view. So there's my stock on the front. And there's my six inch long stock, or six and a quarter. So we'll be cutting it off from here when we finish machining this side of the part. And that'll be good for our stock, so we'll OK that. Next, we're going to define our chuck jaws for the left spindle. So we'll go to Properties. And since the bar runs through the chuck, I probably want to use this type of chuck jaws. So maybe I'll make my chuck jaws a little bit longer here. We'll make that uh, three inches. And it doesn't really matter what the first step is because we're not really grabbing on that step. Nor does it matter what the height's going to be because we're going to be to the inside. So we're going to say position this from the stock and let's grip on about three inches of the bar. And let's see what that looks like. So that gives us plenty of room and plenty of gripping power to bore this out, turn out the outside diameter, and then plenty of clearance to cut it off. So we'll OK that. And then OK for our machine group properties.